course, and I'm sure that the last of our athletes will be entering the water as the uh, pro men and pro women are just about to finish. The pro men already through transition and will probably be heading out onto the course. There they go. You see the pro, pro bikes are ranked there. Ben Canute is the man that came out the swim fastest. Slower times than last year by two minutes or by three minutes. Ben Canute came out the water in first place. He is from the United States. He, he did 24.05. Christian Blumenfeld, the defending champion and world record holder just behind him, 24-11, so just uh, five seconds and 52 splits. Philip Graves from the United K Kingdom came out just behind at 24-20. Kasper Stornes, the man who got uh, third place last year, 24-28. Daniel Backegaard, nice swim from him, 24-29. Eric Watson's in the mix there as well, 24-30. Thor Madsen. 2449 Mark Buckingham good name 2455 also from the UK Jacek Kravich uh, in uh, ninth place 2501 so Ben Canute Christian Blumenfeld Philip Graves and Kasper Stornes as well as Daniel Backegaard all close together coming out the water our top pro men are now heading out onto their bike course So he's got to pull the tri suit up, zip that up, get it ready. The uh, race number or bib number has to be worn on the bike at the back. And then on the run, the athletes are required to switch that number around to the front. But it is all business now as we wait for the top ladies to exit the water. The aero helmets, not going to make too much of a difference today. That's the twisted tower on the other side of Bahrain Bay, some at one of the iconic buildings that form the backdrop to the Middle East Championship here in the Kingdom of Bahrain. And we want to say a massive thank you to the royal family and the people of Bahrain for hosting us here today. So Ben Knuth is the man that is uh, out the water first, followed by last year's champion Christian Blumenfeld and Philip Graves from the UK. So there's a UK athlete in the mix there. If I'm not mistaken, we're following our top ladies now. This is all about the women's race, and Holly Lawrence is the lady that would like to get out near the front. But I do think that uh, Lucy Hall is uh, the kind of person who could be in the mix there somewhere. Not to mention Jody Stinson and Lisa Norden, as well as India Lee. Beatrice Weiss, very strong. The uh, young athlete from Austria. So much talent. More and more of the guys going through now. These are our top professional men. Uh, Lukas Kutschaf uh, coming through in 25-26 and getting onto the bike course now. So images of our first lady perhaps heading out the water. They wouldn't be too far behind. These ladies are incredibly fast. Into transition through the arch at the swim in which later on will become the run out. Holly Lawrence is out. There she goes. So Holly Lawrence in her trademark red ladies one piece is on to the bike course. Lucy Hall, that's the lady we were talking about, and she is the official first lady out of the water in 2503, Lucy Hall. Holly Lawrence just behind her. 25.06, so Holly and Lucy right on top of each other, and Jody Stinson in the mix there as well. So it's the three names that we mentioned, and the one name that we didn't was Pamela Oliveira from Brazil. She comes out the water in fourth place, but a mere 0 0.03 of a second behind, and now 0.9 of a second behind, leaving transition. The next time we get to check on the splits between these ladies will be at the 10-kilometer bike mark, but Lucy Hall, that's the lady we were talking about, from the ITU background, stepping up into the longer distance racing. And she's shown her fellow athletes that she means business as she leads out the water 0 0.03 of a second ahead of Holly Lawrence. Jody Simpson, good to see Jody. Jody's had a bit of a rough year as far as injury has been concerned. She's been out of uh, racing more often than not this year. And when we spoke to her at the uh, press conference, she was talking about the frustration 
and uh, the absolute frustration of uh, not being able to train to your peak, not being able to race at the peak of your performance just because the body is just not doing what it's supposed to be doing. I don't know if you caught that, but a second ago, there was somebody doing backstroke. And you'll find amongst the back markers in the age group race, it's any stroke goes as long as you're moving forward. Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the man bringing triathlon to the Middle East. There he goes with his trademark black and gold wetsuit. And he is now into transition. He's a very fast athlete. He trains like a professional. And he's one of those athletes that's not only been to the Ironman 70.3 World Championships, he's also been to Kona, which was the big dream for him. And he went a couple of years ago qualifying and going through to race at Kona where he became uh, a champion in his category. I believe it was the military category where he was the first man home. So he got himself that championship. And Sheikh Nasser last year took a little bit of a break from racing, didn't race quite as much as he had done. I think he wanted to spend more time with his family and more time with his children. Very proud father. He was here yesterday for the Iron Kids on the sidelines cheering on his youngsters and now it's their turn to cheer him on and he really does look like a strong athlete doesn't he I mean he just looks like a professional and you line him up alongside the pros he lines up very strong so Sheikh Nasser is now going to make his way through the very long transition area as we said earlier the athletes all having to run that route so they'll run down the right hand side and then they'll make the turn finding their bicycles. So each athlete will travel the same amount of distance to get to the exit. There's no one disadvantaged at all, not even the Sheikh. He's got to do the same amount of work as everybody else. He just does it a lot, a lot faster than most of them. There he goes. His bike will be racked somewhere near the front. And he'll get onto his bike and start that, that bike course. 90.1 kilometers of cycling. And uh, my producer's having a look at the bike course at the moment, and it looks pretty flat. Not much elevation on that bike course, that's for sure. It really is a personal best course. If you are an athlete and you like to uh, set a new personal best, I would highly recommend coming to the, the Kingdom of Bahrain and uh, racing here because you have a very good chance, barring the wind. That's the only factor here uh, that could... Uh, influence your uh, your race if you head over to the ironman.com page and you select ironman 70.3 middle east championship bahrain you get a beautiful front page that says swim in the bay the bike is flat the run is flat the average air temperature gets to around 22 degrees so it's gonna be slightly warmer today 24 and the average water temperature 23 degrees so slightly above that at 24 degrees today as well Thousands of uh, age group athletes making their way around this swim in Bahrain Bay. It is a hive of activity. This is the young lady who is our wheelchair athlete. Uh, just a few years ago, she was uh, an able-bodied athlete. Tragically lost the use of her legs and is now in the wheelchair, but that's not stopping her. She was at our press conference as well. And she is uh, a very focused and determined lady as we head to the front of the bike course now. I would imagine, if I'm not mistaken, this would be Ben Knut, who was the first man out of the water, but not by far, though. He was uh, around about six seconds faster than last year's champion, Christian Blumenfeld. And Ben Knut, part of the Bahrain 13 endurance team, which was the vision of Sheikh Nasser and uh, a guy called Chris McCormack. You know, who, you may know who he is. He's uh, won a couple of world championships himself. The two of them came up with the idea to put an inspirational team of professional athletes together. And this is their sixth year operating as a team. And they're setting the trends. And I tell you what, they like to podium. Ben Knut, very humble man. And uh, we did an interview with Ben at the uh, press conference a short while ago. And uh, he was talking about the, the fact that he is getting married in, uh, in January or February. I said to him, what are you doing after this race? And he said, well, I'm going home to plan my wedding. 
and uh, his fiance was actually with him. And if you'd like to hear what Ben had to say, have a listen to this. It was a great chat with Ben Kniez. Yeah, thanks. It's, uh, it's been quite a long season for me, so this is kind of to cap off the year and had some decent training, but um, after, you know, racing since February, not really sure how the body will respond, so I think I'm going to feel pretty good, but never know until race day. When you have a look at the gentleman on the start line around you, uh, where do you think your biggest threat is for the weekend? I mean, the world record holder with Christian Blumenfeld. Um, I mean, there's, there's quite a few good guys here, so um, I think that he'll probably be the main contender so far, defending champion and all that. Um, but, yeah, I'm ready for anybody. This race essentially would end off your uh, 2019 season, so you've obviously got some goals for the weekend. Uh, care to share those without giving too much away? Oh, sure. I mean, it's a fast course, so looking for a fast time, like maybe we can get in range with what Christian did last year, and then obviously the win would mean a lot to, to win a regional championship, and from there just kind of go out and empty the tank for the year and, and end on a good note. Part of the endurance team here in Bahrain, uh, it must be great to call this almost a home race for you. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. So this is actually my first trip out here and so far the welcome has been fantastic and yeah, just looking forward to seeing more of the country and, and racing on a, a great course. Last question, what are you doing after here? Do you get a little bit of a break? Do you get, get to go home for, uh, for festive season celebrations? Yeah, I'll go home and uh, about uh, less than a month now I'm getting married on January 4th. So that's uh, finishing off plans for that and going to spend some time with family. Yeah, thanks. It's uh, it's been quite a long season for me, so this is so chatting with Ben Canute, uh, the man who is at the front end of the field. He was the first man out the swim, not by far though, and uh, part of the Bahrain Endurance 13 team there, talking about his preparations, talking about what he'd like to achieve at today's race, and of course talking about his uh, upcoming wedding. So all the best to Ben. Maybe a pretty decent wedding gift uh, to get himself a win here. He's desperately wanting to get onto one of the steps of the podium. Because the man bearing down behind him is Christian Blumenfeld. And they've just gone through that 10-kilometer mark. And Ben Canute, your race leader, is uh, leading by uh, four seconds, according to the timing. Christian Blumenfeld coming in behind. And how's this? You want to hear something interesting? Guess what speed these guys are riding at? The average speed at the moment is 48.56 for Ben Canute, which is pretty quick. The man behind him, uh, Christian Blumenfeld, is gaining. He's going a little bit faster, 48.67. Uh, the fastest man on the bike at the moment is Philip Graves from the UK. He's riding at an average of 49 kilometers an hour. So he's almost a kilometer an hour faster and uh, that is dangerous news for Ben Canute as uh, he gets chased down by the young man from the United Kingdom, uh, Philip Graves, riding at 49.08. Daniel Backergaard, he's held on well. He's just 26 seconds or so behind. And uh, he finds himself in fourth position. The man who came third last year, Kasper Stornes, uh, he is in fifth position through 10 kilometers. Thor Madsen, I absolutely love that name, Thor Madsen is uh, in uh, sixth position. He's riding at above 48 kilometers an hour. Eric Watson at 45.95 kilometers. So he's a little slower than the rest. He's going to have to push it a bit. And uh, he is in seventh place. Mark Buckingham in eighth place. And Jacek Krocik from, uh, well, it's, it looks like Poland. Uh, he finds himself in ninth position at the moment. So that is a great over... <laughs>